Okay, so this has been an unmitigated issue for a while now. Facebook is attempting a power grab on the sort of 3D space that has always connected the first people in existence. The name Meta says it all, and Facebook makes mistakes, and Facebook doesn't have the money to protect its users' accounts tied to their only real-world identity. I'm not just a nobody raising these points. I've been intensely doing what I can to develop a technology base for hardware, software, and VR development for many years now. Um, especially ubiquitous bash. I've attended as a makerspace board of directors and dual member the Eisenhower Building White House Nation of Makers Gathering, which brought together the board of directors from makerspaces across the United States for the first time. I'm also well connected to enthusiasts and leaders in virtual reality. I've used the best unfinished VR headsets several months before shipment to customers. Um, and I would gladly pay $1,000 a month for hassle-free internet services in my position. The problem here is that Facebook doesn't have any way to do that. Uh, I've even gone to the point of writing a book on how to build all of the basic technologies that can be built in this universe from a few devices and even simpler physics. And I've been carefully watching these issues unfold with Facebook, now Meta, becoming increasingly involved. And while I've remained hopeful, I'm getting increasingly wary of the worst pitfalls that can happen when these sort of large institutions get involved and they don't have the resources to do things safely or properly. Um, I'm not rec reckless myself, by the way. I tend to be careful about things like not getting sick or sp spreading illness. I do wear a mask, for instance. Um, but apparently the only thing I could have done to avoid the situation I'm dealing with with Facebook, which happened to me, can happen to anyone, and sort of illustrates the problem, uh, apparently all I could have done was avoid using the service more, and I'll get into that a little bit more later. Uh, th this is really, though, to the point where you have to question whether scrolling through your Facebook feed, you're going to come across some malicious JavaScript that might hijack your Facebook uh, account and then disrupt your ability to get to it for a month or worse. Maybe you might never get back to being able to use Facebook services or meta services at all. So let's go over a little bit about how much money Facebook actually makes. They make $3.38 per month per user. You can look at the statistics for what their total revenue is. You can look at their statistics for their total number of active users, do the math, and they make a few dollars a month per user. That's not a lot. If something goes wrong that takes an hour of their attention with overhead, that could be like $60 per user. And they probably don't feel that they can afford to spend that, especially with what their objectives are at the moment. So what that means is Facebook meta is becoming an equal opportunity despot in everything they do. Everyone loses. Um, there's just no way that they have enough money to do what they need to do, and there's no way to pay them enough money because they're not setting up any revenue channels. They have set up an oversight board officially that's focused on content decisions and requires an active Facebook account. It doesn't really help except to dismiss supposed allegations of supposed politi political bias, and we know that's not really an issue. Uh, since announcing the Metaverse project, they haven't really shown any technological improvements. They haven't shown groundbreaking multiplayer netcode. I mean, like the obvious first problem to solve is how do you get thousands of players into the same 3D space? Facebook hasn't provided a solution, as far as I know, that really improves upon that problem. Um, they haven't added microtransaction systems between creators and wealthy consumers to help get creators of like websites and other types of assets reimbursed. And they haven't added any revenue streams of their own, as I've mentioned. So instead, their approach here seems to be to use the limited resources that they have not to improve their existing service, which already has problems that I'm getting into here, but instead to try and do a power grab and create some sort of have-to-have middleware 
that they can then use to apply a sales tax to make the already difficult process of creating 3D assets even more difficult and expensive. That doesn't really seem like a good path. Instead of adding to the diversity and quality of life, this is going to flatten culture and people who have problems are going to linger. They're going to be unable to join friends or other after the lightning strikes on their account that is tied to their only real world identity. So when it comes to Facebook hardware, they're doing something that, as far as I know, is kind of unprecedented. When you go to buy a computer monitor or a television, it doesn't usually become completely useless the moment that some third-party account stops working. But now, with Oculus Quest, for instance, if your Meta account, even if it's not per se a Facebook account anymore, but if your account that's attached to Meta, the company, um, becomes unusable because, for instance, the Facebook account, which is still the core of the meta company, uh, if that becomes unusable, you have to worry about whether your device might become unusable. And so basically what you're getting to here is where the equivalent of a computer monitor that is strapped to your face is something that can become completely unusable just because a third-party company made a mistake. This kind of unreliable or unreliability if it can hit me, it can happen to anyone. And you have to think about how this affects at some point national security, because today militaries and governments depend on byproducts of the consumer technology industry. A lot of these improvements to military equipment, even man portable military equipment come directly from displays, sensors, and computer chips that are made for the consumer market. And there's actually a lot of, it seems to me there's a lot of like trade organization stuff to actually limit government spending on building out consumer technology. So if a disreputable company like Facebook basically starts distributing this hardware, distributing this software, and then they fail or users lose trust in it because too many of them lose their accounts, there's a risk of a technological setback. And that will affect the ability of a nation to compete internationally. Um, this, this affects all stakeholders. I've, I've noticed that shareholders increasingly don't seem to want companies to sort of one cycle, take a bunch of risks that are unreasonable and then earn a bonus and then next, uh, next cycle um, try and stabilize things and take a bonus from that. I think shareholders are also moving on to the point where they want more consistent, more reliable returns on their investment as well. So all of the stakeholders don't really benefit from a company like Meta doing something that they're not prepared to do safely. Uh, one other way to look at this is also from the perspective of constitutional rights. Now, obviously Facebook, AKA Meta, all that is a private company. They have free speech and whatnot. But what they don't have the right to do is to become a monopoly to the point that they constrain essential resources. And this is this gets into why monopolies are not allowed to some extent, because the idea is that we, the people, wouldn't tolerate a king or any characteristically similar constraint. We wouldn't tolerate, for instance, uh, standard oil monopolizing the, necessity of, the necessities of life and then dictating or even the necessities of being able to have a business that could competitively exist. We won't allow a company like Standard Oil to dictate the terms under which that essential supply is available. And the same thing should apply as we're talking about creating a virtual space that progressively becomes at least as important as, if more important than the IRL in real life 3D space that we are already familiar with. I think at this point, everyone realizes that whether you like the term cyber or not, basically cyberspace is a thing and it's important that people have access to it. Uh, so now this gets into a little bit closer to what my personal issue is here. Um, basically, it doesn't seem like Facebook is spending enough money on security because something that should be so rare that it almost shouldn't happen seems to have happened to me. 
uh, it, what probably happened was either Facebook mistook my account for someone else's or Facebook so, saw someone try to impersonate me or probably most likely my account was prob compromised probably by session hijacking through a flaw in JavaScript used by their mobile app. In that case, I might have avoided disruption by simply not using Facebook's feed, although it was helpful getting sleep. And a few months ago, it was helpful while I was recovering from COVID. Uh, I particularly enjoyed Viva La Dirt League videos. But the bottom line here is just by not using the feature of the app, I probably could have avoided having Facebook disable my account. And I don't know how long that process is going to take. It could take a week. It could take a month. They've certainly had a few days. And what this gets down to is that companies in general don't spend enough money on security. Bruce Shiner has made that point that standards have been the best stick to encourage adequate spending on security. And he's right about that. But the bottom line is, is that companies don't care enough about security and these sort of issues. And session hijacking through malicious JavaScript that does seem like the, what probably happened at this point, and that should be rare enough that that shouldn't happen. But they need to like fund their bug bounties more. And for a company that makes less than four dollars a month per user to spend any money on adequately securing their services, that just doesn't seem likely. And it's time to call into question whether Facebook has the resources to safely try and pivot into taking over the metaverse when they're clearly not spending the resources, in my opinion, on security. I mean, I realize I'm one case, but this is something that should be extremely unlikely. Um, also, I wasn't doing anything particularly stupid here. I had changed my password to something entirely unique earlier this, earlier this year. I have since changed some more passwords and temporarily disabled some of my own resources to lock things down. Uh, if this can happen to me, it can happen to anyone, presumably who spends more than a day or two of their time browsing, over a few months, browsing Facebook's feed. Um, so the end result of this is that, uh, at least for now, someone probably expended a few dollars worth of imp impersonation or a fraction of a zero-day exploit that probably was really worth more than the bug bounty that Facebook offers for it. And so for one way or another, for some few dollars worth of efforts, somebody probably trolled my account in some way or misused it and is now costing me the effort of going out and publicly telling the world what happened, following up with Facebook as much as possible, which hasn't been very successful predictably. And it's, it's not like I can just ignore this either because that's a great way to have 30 days go by and not be able to get the account back. Uh, so this is going to cost me, this has already cost me a few days of extraneous effort and may cost weeks or more. Um, I do realize that there are other things happening in the world, but th as a society, we need to get ahead of these emerging issues because if we just get behind them, they compound and pile up and things like pandemics and wars get worse. And it's possible that this isn't entirely unrelated. We do have a near peer hot war happening right now, actually, with Russia. And it's possible that for lack of much of anything better to do right now, that a lot of Russian hackers are doing everything they can to disrupt the lives and businesses of US citizens. It's possible that this was part of that. Russia certainly did a lot of damage through hacking up to disabling U.S. East Coast critical infrastructure. Uh, everybody knows about the ransomware attack that disabled uh, fuel transport across the East Coast. So it's possible that something happened there and that this is just part of that. Um, and so that's why we that's another reason why we should take seriously the question of whether private companies are adequately investing in things like security. And this is, there are easy ways to deal with this reactively as well as proactively. I think the, I think the easiest thing to do would be to just shorten the cues on getting through these sort of issues when they happen, which doesn't really take that much more money. We're not talking about improvement in throughput. We're just talking about that when issues come up, that 
just enough additional throughput is put into this so that these issues get addressed more quickly. And then people like myself won't have to waste inordinate amounts of time dealing with the possibility of what could happen if they don't deal with this with Facebook. Speaking for myself, for instance, I can't afford really not to have a Facebook account ever because I'm in the VR industry. I may need to use Facebook products and services, even if I think that they're currently not headed on the best path. So I can't really afford to just disappear from that. Plus, there are corporate and messenger reasons to use Facebook. Um, so since this happened December 1st, Thursday last week, um, I've been kind of busy dealing with this. And I wondered, what would Elon Musk do? Um, would he hire attorneys, private investigators, message his friends? Well, I am curious what the best practices for um, wealthy or high profile people are. But in this case, I think that he would just tweet about it. So that's what I'm doing. Um, meantime, uh, this is um, this here is some of the uh, dialogue I've had back with uh, Facebook. It pretty much just goes, I send something through their website and they just say our decision is final and they're not going to do anything. Um, basically, they basically say you're ineligible and this is final. I've also contacted the FBI through their IC3 and given them some information about this. And of course, not much has happened with that. Uh, as far as I know, um, this is what happens when I post um, stuff. They just say, we can't review the decision to disable your account, uh, which is pretty rich uh, coming from a company that can do some of their stuff from home and just laid off about 10% of their workforce. Um, their oversight board might have mentioned this, they, they seem pretty specialized for trying to deal with apparent political bias. They seem to require that you have an active Facebook account. Now, there might be some way to get in touch with them, but I haven't been able to do that yet. They don't seem to have addressed the issue of people's accounts tied to their real world identities being locked out. Um, and that's pretty much where this sits. Um, Curiously, I did get an email about my Oculus account getting one kudos for some very old post, but I'm afraid that could get disabled too, so I haven't messed with it. Uh, well, anyway, that's my take. I, I don't think that we should all be going to buy Oculus Quest or anything like that. Well, while we can't really trust the reliability of Facebook and Meta related accounts that could disable that could be disabled potentially for weeks to months or worse. And since they're tied to our real world identities could effectively turn into a real world permanent ban that we don't really have a direct customer support number for. I don't think this is a good direction. I don't think that Facebook has the money to do this safely. And for now, we'll just see where this goes.